Welcome to the Gents Talk podcast, uh, a series by Gents Post. Uh, we're filming from the Startwell studio here in beautiful Toronto. I uh, want to quickly shout out our series sponsors, Belova, who's hooked us up with some beautiful watches. Um, and of course, our friends at God Style, who've uh, essentially helped us out with some fresh fits, keeping us gents looking good. Our guest today is um, unique in the sense where this is an individual who gets a lot of mainstream attention, rightfully so, um, is at the top of his class in his field, member of Toronto FC, and a member of the Canadian men's national soccer team headed to Qatar for the FIFA World Cup, which we're all finally excited about because it's been a long time since Canada has played on that stage. I'd like to welcome Jonathan Osorio to the podcast. Jonathan, welcome. Thank you, man. Thanks really for Really appreciate me. you having you here. I appreciate being here. Yeah, no, listen, it's great. Um, we, I wanted to, you know, it's, it's great because we, for a while now, I've been trying to, to schedule a time to chat with you um, and it just happened to work out where we're doing it sort of in studio as opposed to just over zoom or something. And, you know, I got to transcribe it like this is, I think going to be a much better free flowing conversation for, for us both. Um, Jonathan, a lot of, you know, in my research, I found a lot of articles, a lot of stories that were sort of very much surface level about, you know, you, your career. And I really want to dive into who Jonathan is, the person behind the jersey, yeah. uh, who Jonathan was growing up, you know, in a country playing soccer in a country that's hockey dominated, um, who Jonathan is, you know, when life's just not working out the best way, you know, whether it's uh, an injury or, you know, you you don't score for a number of games or it's just, you know, the, the terrain the of playing on a field sort of with the lights and the cameras on you and the criticism that comes with being a professional athlete. Sort of those are the, the things that I really want to delve into with you. But maybe we can start with you just sort of telling me in your own words who Jonathan Osorio is. Uh, in my words, um, I think I'm just a... I mean, it's cliche, a lot of people say this, but I'm a normal person. I'm just normal. Uh, um, off the field, I'm a much more calm person. Um, I would say pretty easygoing. Uh, much more, I wouldn't say quiet, but like a maybe a little bit reserved. Um, especially with, um, with people I don't really know. Mm. Uh, why that is, I don't know. It's just the way I am. It's the way I kind of carry myself. I, I like to be comfortable with people before I actually open up. Uh, it, it's kind of been, it's not no so much a positive. It, it could be a negative most of the time, actually. So Why? I've been trying to work on that just because then um, you, what, what happens is that you let um, people take their own perspective or people guess now what, like uh, what to take from with what you take or what you give. And instead of opening up and really letting them see who you truly are, um, I tend to be a little bit reserved. And, and then people have to come up with their whatever comes to their head. Oh, Jonathan is this type of person or that. So that has happened uh, to me. But I, I've grown from that, I think. Uh, I think that was more when I was younger. And yeah, growing up, I was a, I was a very shy kid. Very, very shy kid. Um, but w uh, love sports. And love football, of course. Football, soccer is, is my love, is, you know, my first love. And and um, sports is what made me get out of my shell, especially when when I was younger, I was moving quite a bit and, and changing schools. And then when we settled in Brampton, um, I, I, I don't think I had a lot in common with the kids that went to that school. And so, and plus I was shy, so it was hard for me to make friends at first until we started playing sports. And then that's where I kind of came out of my shell. And uh, actually, I, that's when I started really trying other sports because all my friends liked other sports. They didn't like mm -hmm. football. They didn't like soccer. And so I had to try all these other sports. And Did you like any of them? 
yeah I, I like all sports to be honest um if there was another sport that you could play that wasn't soccer what would it be if 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 i was uh so the sport i like other than soccer is basketball but i wouldn't be able to play basketball i'm not tall enough and not <laughs> good enough um but i really like basketball um but Good actually cardio. yeah uh, but when i was really young actually i i tried uh baseball okay yeah i had friends that like baseball so i got into baseball and i was i was pretty good at it i mean i, I was just naturally pretty good at sports i feel and and so i took up baseball for a bit there's actually a point where i stopped playing soccer uh competitively for like two years three years to play baseball just because that's where all my friends were mm. and um and and then yeah at my third year i i started to i would play soccer all every day at, at school still and then i realized ah uh, I, I i'll never forget actually i was in brampton one day it was after our baseball game ended and we were in a complex where there was baseball fields and soccer fields right mm. beside it's called century gardens and our baseball f uh our game was done and I looked over at the game going on and at that moment it, I, it's crazy because I remember it to this day I looked over and in that moment I said I, I miss like I want to be there I don't want to be playing baseball I, I want to be playing on the pitch and I told my parents I'm like I want to play soccer I'm done with baseball I don't care if I don't know anybody I, I just <laughs> want to play soccer were they supportive your parents of course yeah. my my dad's my dad likes football my dad my parents, oh, are, Colombian. parents are Colombian yeah. they're Colombian so I mean that that's that's the sport over there in South America and they love it my dad loves soccer and I grew up watching my dad play at, in his leagues in the mm. local leagues here and um so yeah he was he, he was very happy he was that very, was an easy conversation oh like easy that. yeah He's like, okay <laughs> let's do it no problem my parents were very I'm, I'm very lucky I have very very supportive parents though mm. like really supportive they whatever I wanted to do they tried they tried uh, um the best to to make it happen it, within their means whatever mm. <laughs> they could do and yeah god bless them because uh they did a lot for me even one year i tried hockey okay i tried hockey one year and i had to borrow equipment from my friends because it's so expensive it's too expensive yeah it's way too expensive and um it's not really a sport you can just try no no yeah. exactly you have to be like commit yeah. yeah commit and be and uh, you have to be able to commit financially financially exactly yeah. so um they, i told them hockey and they're like okay and w they they grinded we, we i think the only stuff that i had new was like um my skates my helmet and uh my stick everything else was borrowed mm. but it was it was good it was fun it was fun i played it for one like house league right in the winter and then yeah. i was done with it so y soccer was you said your first love mm -hmm. what is it about the sport that just because you said you played baseball you even did it competitively to, mm -hmm. to some degree and then you tried basketball you tried hockey but you seem to always gravitate back to soccer mm -hmm. what was it about soccer specifically i, I think it's the sport that kind of my dad kind of not like forcefully put on me but it's what he loved right and um, growing up in in a in a culture, a Colombian culture, anybody, everybody around me, my my grandparents, uh, my grandfather, especially my my father, my cousin, my uncle, they all like football, and um, and so I I think I I naturally just fell in love with the sport, and then growing older, I think the, it it it's just a beautiful sport to watch, in my opinion, mm -hmm. you know, uh, to play with your feet um the way the ball moves and all everything about it um as i got older actually i started to appreciate the 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 love that the world has for the sport and that's mm. and that's what really made me fall in love with it and, and when i when you see atmospheres in like south america and europe where the people live and breathe f soccer that's when I realized, wow, like this, this sport is actually like special. It's, it's different than any other. And for what it does for the whole world. Mm -hmm. Do you find that it's not, it could be better here in Canada? Uh, of course. Like I know that we've seen, you know, like after TFC has, you know, had some level of success. Yeah. 
and then you see the fans here started to rally around them. And you got Vancouver and Montreal. Are you starting to see a shift, if you will, in soccer in Canada overall? Maybe more kids are playing soccer. More people are interested in following the sport now that mm. you know Canada's in the World Cup. There, the, you know, and I shouldn't just say Canada. I mean, like there's the, the women's team as well, who's mm-hmm. had tons of success. Mm-hmm. But do you feel that they're that's the landscape maybe is changing? For sure, um, the landscape's been changing. Uh, s- s- starting when TFC was um, was created, um, I remember when TFC was created, they were sending out invites to just like anybody in the neighborhoods to come. Yeah, out yeah open trials. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that, that's that's awesome. I think, and that, that's how you grow the sport. Yeah. That's how you find. I don't know if they found anybody. Um, from those open tryouts but uh can't remember but sometimes that's how you find the diamond man mm-hmm. in, in the rough is when you just leave it open and um that was really cool that was also uh kind of like probably for sure it was like a marketing thing to, to get people really excited about the team and that was the start it was really young right so um to to your question uh, can it be better um of course it, it has it has so much room to grow and 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 become you know at the level of maybe how it is around the world i would say this the reason it's difficult i see it happening because it's already happening there are more kids statistically playing football than playing hockey Hmm. that's a fact um and most of that is because the for the financial cost for the cost um now we have the national team that's successful and going to a World Cup. That helps when you have people that you can look up to and, and reaching levels in the sport, the highest levels in the sport. And it you feels can, more real. It feels more real. It feels more uh, accomplished mm. or more achievable yeah. um, for yourself when you see somebody like you, somebody that grew up, you, you were a kid, he was a kid like I was, let's say. Um, or a kid saying that about me. He was once a kid and is playing in the same fields I was playing and having the same coaches, and now he's there. It means I can do it. So when you have somebody that you can, re- you know, resemble with and, and, and really um, look up to, that, that helps. The culture and the environment of being, like, the biggest sport in this country, it can be that. I, I don't think it, it to become that, it requires a lot of time, hmm. a lot of growing and a lot of time because this sport has been the best sport around the world in other countries forever. Yeah, so they've time. had years and years and years. It's 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 just a tradition. It's the culture. Here, the culture is hockey. And Even it will though be. there's less and less people signing up. Less and less people signing up and less and less people watching. And I, I, I mean, I have nothing against hockey, but it's, it's just how it's going. Hmm. And... Um, basketball had a had a big uh run with the raptors big run with the raptors and everything and still yeah. there are more and more canadians now in the nba so basketball's catching up i would say but uh football has i think the high ceiling just mm-hmm. because we are a multicultural country and all these cultures most of the cultures the number one sport that they like is football so well is, is there it's, it's sort of to to touch on the topic of multicultural y- your parents are from colombia mm-hmm. Was there ever a pull for you to to go and maybe p- play for the Colombian team as opposed to playing for Team Canada? So, um, no, because at the time, not that I wasn't not sorry, not that I wasn't dreaming big enough. I just didn't see it as a possibility. I didn't think like over there they didn't even. I wasn't on their radar or anything. They didn't really look at players in the MLS. Um, And to be honest, growing up, like, I grew up most of my life in Canada. um, So I looked at myself more Canadian than Colombian. Mm. I have Colombian blood, and and I I, I was raised in uh, in a house following the traditions of Colombia. But, you know, I never had, I never grew up, like, a lot of my friends, almost none of my friends growing up were Colombian. Hmm. Um, or even Latino, for that, for that sense. Um, 
so it's weird growing up and and i think this is a a, a thing that people uh, a lot of different people deal with growing up in this country that have a um, different background but are born in canada is that to the colombian to colombian people so for example in my in my in my for my story the colombian people i feel like don't see me as colombian mm. and then i'm not canadian enough for the canadians right so i'm kind of like in the middle you don't know where to fit in i don't know you know my identity is like yeah. which one am i or am i both and I, that at the end of the day i think that's what most people try to do they try to be both but like so what do you try to be both i'm yeah. both um unapologetically both. yeah I'm, just that's I'm the both. way you are I, I would say i lean more to because i've lived here and everything and my friends and everything i i probably have more of a when you meet me i'm more of a canadian mm. like from toronto and yeah yes obviously i don't look like a canadian i don't even know what that means i don't anymore. even know exactly <laughs> you don't even know what that means anymore. yeah <laughs> so I, when you when you hear me talk and everything i, I speak english perfectly yeah. and everything sometimes uh with my friends the lingo can come out from being from here and stuff so um yeah I, I lean more to being on that side but uh like i can speak spanish i i can speak with my family and everything and 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 i like the music uh that the colombian people like it's beautiful music beautiful salsa reggaeton I, yeah. I love it so and football the football side of it and things i my actually my playing style resembles one of somebody that plays in colombia or a colombian hmm. player so yeah i try to it, it's both it's both part of my my dna and that's what i try to show very cool you're with tfc playing for your hometown team What's that like? It's beautiful. Every man. time you get on that field. Yeah, it's like, a blessing. A yeah. blessing, honestly. Um and in in so many ways. Uh one, just to be able to play professionally at that level, um, in front of my family, my friends every day in the stadium is a blessing because uh a, probably a high percentage of players around the world can't say that. It's just you know it's not a normal thing mm. to play for your hometown and and to play here as long as i uh, as many years as i have um to be with one club for this many years is also something that i don't take for granted because forget that it's my hometown playing with one club and 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 you know it's unique it's, it's unique it's yeah. unique in any sport unique in any sport now especially um it's not so common so that's been a blessing but the fact that it's in my hometown amazing and and um and i've we've had success and that's that's the best part that we have had success we've won a championship and and um yeah that's honestly the best feeling the best feeling i've ever had in my life and uh it's, it's what you play for though though to strive for that feeling again and again and again uh as much as you can for your career um so yeah it has its uh, pressures as well there's a pressure that comes with being a hometown kid and and performing when you're on the pitch and you're kind of representing the people that are coming to watch and you don't want to disappoint, disappoint. Mm -hmm. and there's a pressure with that a huge one so how do you deal with that honestly you try not to think about it really you try to focus zero in on your job um you know you don't read too much as a young player you kind of when i was younger i used to stay away from twitter and those things and completely i'm a little bit older now so i can take a peek and see what they're saying and not let it won't it won't, it won't bother me you, yeah. don't phase me or nothing is that the advice you give the younger guys yeah yeah, yeah. don't look at that don't look at that because it could be a very toxic place oh okay it could, it could, if you don't if you're not mentally strong mm -hmm. and you don't even have not that you're mentally strong but if you're you're not experienced with that if you never like dealt with that uh, it could play with your mind and and your mind is your biggest tool in football, really, other than your body, of course, your feet. But uh, the mind is the biggest, your biggest tool, and you need that fresh and, and open every time you play or else you'll be at a disadvantage. How do you keep the the mind protected in a being a professional athlete? Because you know that, you know, it's a finite time. There's only so long that you're going to get to play a sport that you love. There's only so long that you're going to have a window where you can monetize your abilities, right? 
and then it's over. And, you know, I've heard tons of athletes talk about as they get to towards the end of their career or even the middle part of their career, they know that they're now on the other side of that. Mm -hmm. There's a sense of anxiousness, not knowing what to expect. How do you prepare or keep your mind sort of protected and insulated from all of these things, these thoughts that will intrude and say, oh, you know, maybe you weren't feeling great yesterday and you didn't Mm -hmm. play as good as you could have. Yeah, yeah. What steps do you take to to offset that? I um, so you you can't you can't really I would say you can't avoid it, mm-hmm. like the doubt, thoughts of doubt, and and questioning yourself will happen, especially in your career. Lots of times happened to me, uh, especially in a in a football career. Football career is ups and downs for everybody. Like the best player in the world whether you think it's Messi, Ronaldo, whoever, they have downs too. Um, Their downs are different than other people's, but they have downs and they have those moments where doubt creeps in for sure in their mind. And uh, The way I deal with it, um, I I would say I I wasn't good at it when I was young. Uh, I was not good at dealing with uh, uh, doubt or being low on confidence and... um, anxiety um but as you experience you realize you know i try to tell myself whatever happens you know as long as i put in the work i i i I go back to putting in the work going back to the basics putting in the work in the uh, at the training ground um you know uh, doing the extra work needed there the gym uh taking care of my body after recovery i focus on the little things that i can control to perform after that, um, I've learned to now uh, deal with things that I can't control a lot better. And th- that was like the huge thing for me is I try to control everything or try to I, I try to make everybody love me. That's mm-hmm. impossible. That's impossible. You can be as good as you can be the best player. There's going to be people that don't like how you play. It's just that's the way it is. And. And those things I used to want to try and control. Okay, next game I'm gonna make them. I'm gonna make them like me. I'm gonna play so good they're gonna like me. And then you play as good as you can, and they still got something to say. And then there's people that also believe that. There's nothing. Can't change their minds. You can't change their mind. You 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 can't control it, man. Not everybody's gonna love you, and you gotta just keep going and focus on you and doing your best. And so I I go back to the basics every time. I go back to the basics, uh, doing what I know best. And letting that, you know, do, doing those things give me confidence to now do more and do more and, 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 and improve every time. Is there a dark side to soccer that people just don't see? Yeah. Uh, sports. Sports in general. Sports in general. There's a dark side. There's a business side. Um, there's the stuff that happens within your team that never, that, you know. Never makes it out. That public. never makes it out publicly that you have to deal with and that can really mess with your mind as well it starts makes you question things I mean, why is this happening why 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 can this player do this but this player can't do that why is this player rewarded and this player is not when they're doing the same thing you know things like that yeah it's sports it's it's uh it happens in every sport and um yeah people don't see it then there's injuries you know you deal with injuries and then um you know the or you play with injuries sometimes like little little mm-hmm. niggles and stuff and you're playing with a little injury because it's not enough to to take you out but then you can't really perform at your 100 percent. but the you're the outside criticized. doesn't see that yeah they just see you're on the pitch so you're good the mm-hmm. crowd sees you're on the pitch you're good you should be playing your best and sometimes that's not the case everybody's dealing everybody deals with personal stuff Everybody has personal things happening at home that they they could be dealing with that, you know, everyday normal people deal with. Mm -hmm. But then imagine having to perform now on the pitch. People don't see that. So, yeah, there's there's many things that an athlete, I think, goes through um, that people don't see in in a dark side. Like you said, there's it's cutthroat. It's a cutthroat industry. Um, You're 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 loved as long as you're you bring value. 
And then when you don't bring value, you're gone. It's the way it is. No matter what you've done. If next year, if at any time, I'm not a value to Toronto FC, that's it. No matter if I've been there 10 years, no matter what I've done, that's it. So It's a hard reality. To it's, it's, it's the reality. It's, it's, it is what it is, you know, and... and um, but yeah, people don't, don't realize that, you know, things, you know, especially in this league, North American sports where like there's trading, like you can trade, teams can trade you and the team basically owns you. The league owns you. you. You don't really have a right to choose where you play. And Europe is different. Europe, you can, you have a contract with a team. And if a team wants to sell you, you have to give the okay. All parties have to be okay with it. Right. Here, if, if uh, Toronto FC wants to trade uh, X to Salt Lake tomorrow, you get the call in the morning, uh, you're traded to pack Salt Lake, bags. pack your bags, you, they need you there uh, this afternoon. And just like that, your life's changed. Your life changed. You're, li- yeah. you're living in a different city and, and, and everything's different now. And maybe you have a family. Now your kids, you have to take them out of school, yeah. put them in a new school, your wife. Uh, you know, it's... It's a crazy reality. When Do you, you think find about that it. there's our relationships between players and the teams generally good, or does that tension create underlying problems? From what you've seen, you know, especially with maybe young guys who come in and you know they don't know what to expect, and just like that, they're part of a trade package, or even older guys who are, you know, like you said, they for the last X number of years they've given their heart and soul, and then they feel like they've just been mm-hmm. moved on to the next person. Yeah, I think th- those things definitely can create tension. Um, it also depends on the on the person. Different different people react to it differently. Um, some people take it personally, and some people say well, it, it's business. I understand, and this is what I signed up for. Hmm. Um, and neither way is wrong to take it. Neither way is wrong, in my opinion. I think you can take it the way you want to take it. Um, but at the end of the day, you have to understand that uh, things happen, and 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 you have to then you have to adapt. It's about how you react to it. Um, but yeah, for sure, I think that's why, uh, in my opinion, the relationship between uh, like management and a player is 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 very distant. It, it's it, generally distant. Generally, because. Okay. Um, you don't want to get too close. You don't want to get too close just because, you know, then he has to make a decision and and then you take it personal. Yeah. And you don't want that to happen. That's So I, I choose to, I like, I choose to kind of not, I, I guess, distance. I don't know if that's the right I think word. I know what you mean. Yeah. You're not distancing yourself because you don't want the relationship, but yeah. it's just easier for business. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's just, uh, for me, in my in my in my head it makes it fair it makes it fair to for any decision any decision is made without um uh a personal agenda attached to it and and that's how i want my career to be defined i want i want to earn everything i don't want to be given anything and um and so that's the way i choose to to go about my career how do you look back on your career so far like you know every i think every man whether they're a professional athlete or working as a senior executive at a bank, mm. will take account of where they're at in their career, what's next, what's coming, where they were, what they could have done better. You know, when you look back at what you've accomplished to this point, what thoughts come to mind? Uh, when I look back, I, I'm I'm generally pretty. Um, I'm happy because I am where I am now, and um, but not satisfied. Not satisfied. I think you can never be satisfied until it's really all done, over and done. Um, I honestly try not to look back. The past is the past, and and you only take like those experiences with you to mm. to to learn and 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 be better. So I try not to look at the past and say, okay, I've done this, this, and this, so I'm good kind of thing i i try to look at what i haven't accomplished that's more what i focus on what i what i haven't accomplished and what i want to accomplish and what's that what do you want to accomplish oh i i, I want to have the best career possible and that means 
playing all the time, winning all the time, performing all the time at the highest level I could possibly be at while economically situated myself for the future. Hmm. And, and all those things are super hard to balance. Um, you know, for, uh, for example, I'm in a contract here. Um, this is my last year of my contract. My next, you know, after December, I don't know what will happen, but I will, I will try to, uh, I will be looking at all those things, you know, what, where's the place that's going to push me to be better where I'm going to be better. I'm going to have the chance to be better, have the chance to win and have the chance to make the money I feel I deserve or, or need in order to put myself in a position for, for after I'm done playing. Yeah. Cause you know, ultimately I think what often people forget is, you know, the, the shelf life of an athlete is, is very short by your like forties, essentially you're, you're, you're not playing professionally anymore. Um, and you now have the next, hopefully 45, 50 years, 60 years to figure to sustain yourself for mm-hmm. the rest of your life. And I think a lot of people forget that, mm-hmm. that, you know, athletes are finite in their abilities. And I think one of the things I wanted to ask you about was, you know, as you go through people tend to misunderstand how much work is actually involved in maintaining your physical abilities, especially when you're not playing. They just see, you know, Jonathan on the pitch. They don't see what happens behind the scenes. They don't see the training. They don't see the the early mornings, the late nights, the the meal prep, the, the, travel. the, the travel, the ice baths, the, the massages mm-hmm. and, you know, sometimes people misconstrue that athletes live this luxurious lifestyle, mm-hmm. but oftentimes it's very, it's a very hard lifestyle because you have to, your body is literally all you have yeah. to continue to do what you want to do. Can you maybe talk a little bit about what that experience is like, what that looks like? Yeah, it's tough. It's a, t- it's, I, I don't want to say it's a tough, like, I don't want to say it's like a, a shitty lifestyle it's not a shitty lifestyle mm. uh i'd be crazy to tell you that it's tough because you know it's a 24 7 job yeah, like you said you're, you're taking care of your body your body is your is your everything uh, you know you're you being available on the pitch is what gets you whatever you know it's, it's our job and so when you're not when when we get an injury or or when we're not feeling right for whatever reason, uh, when we get sick or, or the travel and fatigue sets in and you're not sleeping well, all those things matter. All those things affect you. You know, people don't see that we ha- sometimes we do five hour travel day or five hour travel uh, flights. But yeah, it's a five hour flight, but they don't see the, the you know, getting to the airport, getting to the airport, going customs, through security, yeah. going through customs. Oh, the 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 pilot is late so you're waiting on the on the plane right. for another hour you d- you are delayed you're supposed to get there at uh 7 p.m um local time you get there in 10 p.m local time so now you're having dinner at 10 30 local time you gotta get to sleep and then you gotta then wake you up to and sleep then and wake up and and then you have your routine yeah. and and uh now you're in a different time zone so you woke up at uh, 6 a.m instead of 9 a.m mm. it, you know those things like that it messes with you it messes with you yeah. yeah yeah eventually you know it catches up to your body and so you have to do everything you can to take care of it and um sometimes you know sometimes you you want to stay up late and watch that movie with your with your girlfriend or by yourself or whatever or you want to have that night out with your friends you, you can't if you want to be at the highest level, you can. But if you really want to be performing at your highest level, you have to make those sacrifices. And I think the best players in, in whatever their craft is, whatever sport, are the players that are willing to sacrifice whatever so that they are feeling good and at their peak to perform on, on the stage, on the on the big stage. And you have people like that around you who understand that. They don't... Yeah. yeah. And, and it evolves as you, you know, as a young player... 
uh, you're not so professional. You're not. You're a little bit naive to things, and you eat whatever you want because it doesn't affect you at the time. Mm. But then you start to get older, and you start to you realize you lose the metabolism. <laughs> you lose the metabolism. Your your body is not reacting as yeah. good to to certain foods or or how much food you're taking. Uh, and so you have to adapt. And as you get older, you start to really um, you learn your body, your own body, and what your body likes and stuff. And then you start to see what the best players on the team do and what their tendencies are and, and what they're doing off the pitch. And you're at lunch and you're kind of taking a peek and seeing why are you eating that. And and I was a young player that kind of would, would I wouldn't I would be too shy to ask hmm. like the best player or whatever. But there are some young players that will just ask why are you eating that, why why that much, right? And and I wish I was that guy. Now looking back. I wish I was that I was that kid because then I would have learned much faster. But now I'm looking. Hmm. And you try to search on the internet or something, and then <laughs> and then he's eating something different next meal, and well, you could have just asked, you know. And and um, but yeah, no, uh, it, it it evolves, and and um, but you start to you start to see that the best players are the ones that take care of themselves the most. Is there something that you know now? that you didn't know when you first started like if you could tell younger jonathan do this what would something like that look like or there's a you know a young guy coming up somewhere or a young gal coming up somewhere and they're about to to turn professional what advice would you give them i would tell them uh, uh, as far as things that involve well everything about the sport but because you could do this with everything. I would say to to you have to to be curious, to be to question. Question, question things. Why? Learn. Be open be open to learning. Don't just don't just see things and think that it is that way because it's supposed to be like you have to learn about it. Why why are you doing this exercise? And how, are you even doing it right? Like when I was young, I used to I used to be doing all these exercises that I see like in the gym that are strength coach would would set up for us and he would show it and then i would try to mimic it i was just you know i would do it the way i think is is mm. and it turns out six seven years later another trainer that i'm working with i'm doing the same exercise that i've been doing for seven years and he said man you're not even doing this right <laughs> and i go what do you mean uh, like th- you're supposed to do it this way so that it works out this part of your yeah. body i go it's supposed to work out this part of your body. <laughs> there goes seven years. Seven years, yeah. Seven you're right. years. So that's why I would, I would, you know, that's the kind question. of advice to question, to learn, like learn about what you're doing and why you're doing it, and make sure that you're doing it right all the time. Yeah. So you've got you've got the World Cup coming up. Mm-hmm. How exciting is that? It's amazing. That's 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 got to be like every kid's dream. It's- and it happens so rarely for so many people and you get to hopefully knock on wood you get to go and and sort of live that experience yeah it's uh super exciting um it's hard not to get ahead of yourself and only think about that uh because i do have a season with toronto city to play before that and and that season is important for me going into the world cup so you try not to get ahead of yourself and only think about that but it it's a it's amazing it's an amazing feeling um because of uh, of like like you said uh every footballer dreams this and then there there's there's in some countries where it's it's a dream that's so achievable like as long as if you're at that level and then there's being canadian and dreaming about it and that's that's a different ball game because that's not normal it, this is our first time in a world cup in in over 30 years so it's actually crazy. It's a crazy uh, feeling that I'm going to be representing Canada at the mm-hmm. FIFA World Cup. Uh, it's a, it's amazing, man. It's uh, it's going to be uh, a dream come true, and and I have a lot of work till then to to make that dream come true. Um, but uh, yeah, it's exciting for for the whole country. Really, it's going to be a real eye opener for everybody. I think here, and then especially with that leading into the next world cup in 2026 which, which is in toronto which toronto we, we vancouver. will have games in toronto and vancouver yeah so it's it, it this is a huge um builds momentum 
yeah, huge, huge momentum, amount, yeah. huge momentum, and, and it's a huge um, time in the history of uh, of the sport in this country. Well, um, l- recently there was some, and I wanted to ask you, and again, sort of feel feel free to if you're not comfortable having this conversation or you don't want to, that's completely okay. But you know. It, Every, everyone who's followed what's happening with Team Canada making it into the World Cup has seen, you know, the the cancellation with uh, of the friendly with Iran, mm-hmm. and then uh, the other game where you know the players said, you know what, we don't want to play. Um, how has that sort of affected maybe some of the joy or taken some of the joy out of you know qualifying for the World Cup that now you know you're sort of instead of getting to relish in the moment and enjoy the moment and sort of focus on just preparing for it, you know, the, the team and the players are, or the organization rather, and the players are sort of trying to figure things out, if you will. Yeah. Um, yeah, of course it's, it's, it's a, it's a shame that, um, that it had to come to, to that point at this moment, just because we had qualified for the world cup and with the momentum and everything. Um, I think both sides would tell you that. Um, nobody, one, first of all, nobody wanted this. The players definitely didn't want this. You know, we want to play for our fans. We always want to play. Um, and, and and I really hope that that's not questioned by anybody. It's what we love to do. We want to play. That's what we do. Uh, saying that, you know, this was something that the players felt was was necessary, unfortunately, after and, and and this isn't a thing that that just popped up. This is, I think, uh, a thing that had been brewing for for many years. Hmm. And on the player side, um, we just couldn't we couldn't really stand our guard because we were not good. We were not good enough. We were. Uh, you didn't feel like you had leverage. We didn't have no leverage, right. and so we 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 had to be, you know. We had to take a lot of things, and so now that we are we are good and 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 bringing this the f- this country joy and and everybody success. You want to be compensated for it fairly. Uh, we just uh, not only the compensation, but there's there's many things that I think um, that that we want to see happen, and it's all for the growth of the game in this country. Mm-hmm. It, that's really what it's for. It's for the growth of the game in this country, and it's so that this country doesn't go back to that. We're trying to set move the standard, forward. move it forward, so that it keeps moving forward, and and and, and it becomes a, a now uh, an expectation that yeah, Canada is a footballing nation. They are they are known. They play football over there, and they're good at it. We want to be known as that with our results and and everything around it. Right. So. To make it viable long term, exactly for kids, you know, coming up to say, you exactly. know, what, this is something that I could realistically pursue as yes. a career. Exactly, hmm. exactly, and 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 more in- incentive to for that to be, uh, you know, a kid's dream and 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 everything. So, so yeah, that that's uh, that's what it came down to, um, unfortunately. And I know that things are in a much better place now, and and and. So between the federation and the players and, and, and both sides are working towards a deal. And I don't feel as th- that uh, I think during the time it was a little bit of a, um, a distraction to the outside for, for preparation for the World Cup. Mm-hmm. I think on the inside, um, what happened happened. And, and, and f- from now, moving forward, it won't be, I think. Uh, people will get on board again, and, and we'll see that uh, you know both sides, both sides uh, uh, of the coin want what's best for for this uh, sport in this country, and, and we will make sure that we're prepared for as best as we can be for for the World Cup to represent in the best way. What is best for for soccer in Canada? So you talked about there's certain things that you know have to happen to keep the sport viable. Um, to continue to grow the game, as you're saying, more kids are getting involved in soccer and mm-hmm. want to play the game. And, of, of course, seeing, you know, Osorio and the rest of Team Canada hit the pitch in Qatar and take on some of the world's best teams mm-hmm. and some of the world's best players, they're going to want to get involved. You know, it's gonna there's going to be an uptick. It's kind of like when the Raptors won, mm-hmm. all of a sudden everybody wants to play basketball now. Yeah. 
what needs to be done to continue to move soccer forward in Canada? Well, I think um, on the on the pitch pitch wise, um, you know, the development of of players and the development of coaches, the development of everything around the game has to increase and and be invested in more and and um, and so that includes the referees, players, um, academies, uh, our league, C- Canadian Premier League. All those things have to be, you know, invested in more, and and of course, and um, and uh, to have the best available people always, kind of running those things, so that we can get the best out of the the players, the kids, and and and, and give them a good path towards uh, playing for the national team and and performing with the national team, and not only with the national team, but performing at the highest level in club, in club football. And right now, that would be like in Europe. That would be like Alfonso creating more Alfonso Davies. Um, in Just this, to garner more in international recognition. Exactly, yes. Yeah. But also create now players that also, uh, I guess I would use, you know, um, players that play in the MLS that also uh, do well in the MLS. Those things all help. Uh, and it's, it's all results, honestly. It's the results. The results on the pitch is what matters. But then, yes, there's the off-field things that uh, I think now that we have a lot of players that have played, we have a lot more ex-professionals and that have seen, that have played at a high level and have seen the ins and outs of, of what happens in football. We have um, ex-players now that own academies, hmm. that own teams, that are, are involved with teams uh, from the office side. I think we need to also get have those people um involved in the sport because it's important and and the business side i I understand that there has to be business people that run it i I understand that part there has to be people that you know obviously have a background in business and and those things but i think also that there should be a a a foot like a an ex-player or ex even coach to kind of for perspective for for perspective for for uh i don't want to say oversee but to help, to have yeah. a say in 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 decisions that have have to happen. Well, on it the helps them. Side. Yeah, absolutely. It helps them make a deci- Whenever they're making their decisions, they can then at least say, "Well, this is how our decision impacts the players." Exactly. Because otherwise, you know, the business folks who are really good at what they do may not understand the implications, the hidden implications, exactly. or their blind spots on how it impacts the players. Mm-hmm. You know, once they're on the pitch, type of thing. Mm-hmm. When um, you're in Qatar, it's gonna be hot. Mm-hmm. Are you? How are you preparing? Because I don't. It, it never gets as hot here as it does in okay, Qatar. Yeah, not even. And close. even though they're doing it in November, yeah, it's still gonna be very hot. Oh yeah. How are you preparing from now? If I don't like, what could you do even to prepare for something like that? The only way to prepare for that kind of type of heat is to play in that type of heat. Okay. For a long time, it's the only way <laughs> yeah. you get used to it. It's the only way, and I and I, and I'm long time. I don't I don't think like like two weeks is gonna. You'll never be used to it. I yeah. Think. Um. Well, I will say though, you can you know playing in the heat. You kind of you train your brain to kind of remember that, and so or or you take notes as to how your body reacts to playing in heat. Right. Because we do have those days here that it gets hot and sure and yeah. We play. So you have to take advantage of those games. For example, for myself, I have to take advantage of those games and remember how my body felt, what I ate that day, w- what I did for, how my body felt in that game and why. So you start to, how did you sleep? How did you eat? Did you hydrate enough before the game, after the game, the days leading up? Um, and um, and the team also has like strength and conditioning coach, nutritionist and 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 uh, medical staff that are also always in contact with us to, to prepare us for those kind of things. they giving us tips, do this, do that, in preparation for Qatar. Saying that, I, I am pretty sure that they're in the stadiums, they have built air conditioning. They'd have to. And apparently, um, they've had games there already, um, and apparently it's it's like, it actually feels cool. Really? On the pitch, on okay. the level, pitch level. Um, so yeah, apparently that it won't be an issue in the games. Apparently, apparently, 
but you won't know until you won't know until <laughs> yeah. you actually feel it yeah um so then yeah when i feel it i'll let you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'm gonna follow up right yeah. afterwards like how was it how? <laughs> <laughs> yeah but i know uh i've heard that like training sessions will be like at night like yeah it won't be in the morning it won't be in the afternoon it'll have to be at night when the sun goes down and things like that so that yeah it's gonna be interesting you must be so excited yeah i can't imagine it's it's got to be like the top the top level of your profession and you get to go you're gonna probably get to meet a whole bunch of your favorite you yeah. know people you've watched people yeah. that you want to meet play uh i mean in our group we're playing against uh two of the best midfielders in the world that i've been watching like for my whole career so yeah you ready that, that's uh yeah i will be i will, will be. be i yeah. will be and um we're yeah. rooting for you yeah yeah <laughs> you got a whole country behind you yeah exactly and that's that's what makes it so amazing is, yeah. is like that feeling of having the whole country behind you so much eyes on you i mean world cup matches bring in millions and millions of viewers so the world is watching and, and that's actually crazy to think about i i, I won't i don't even I won't even really know how that feels until i get down there and you really experience it and feel it but um it's exciting man it's exciting to 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 live out your dream as a kid really so it's yeah it's amazing so i gotta ask you though you said you're in a contract here and after december you don't know what happens the world cup is in november that's a almost a make or break moment for you it could dictate what happens next. It could change your entire career. How are you adapting to that incoming pressure? Because I think, and, I, and I'm not trying to speak for you, but I could only imagine that pressure is going to get increasingly louder and tighter as you get closer to to that stage. Mm -hmm. How are you sort of getting ready to handle all that just embracing it uh i think it, i think because it's it's not like a um i don't look at it as a type of pressure where i don't look at it as a make or break i look at it as, as a, a huge opportunity if anything and i wouldn't say make or break I, I understand what you say by that, but mm -hmm. I'm trying to explain to you how I see it in my head. It, it's an interesting situation. It's a very unique situation that I don't. Not many players can say that they have. Is they're in a contract year and going to the World Cup and playing in the World Cup in their contract year. So much things can happen, and I'm open to all of it. And I'm handling as I'm only concentrated on doing my best on the pitch. And whatever that brings me is whatever it brings me and is what's meant to be. But I can control, again, it's going back to what I can control. I can only control what I do on the pitch. And so I will make sure that I do everything possible to feel good and physically and mentally so that I can perform my best at the World Cup. One, for my country, for, so that we can win for my team. And then after that for yes what it can bring me uh individually in my career and i'm open to everything i'll say that i'm open to everything and that's why it is a pressure but it's a good pressure it's a very exciting pressure very cool well listen jonathan i uh i really appreciate you taking the time to, to chat with me here this was this was great it was uh uh this was an opportunity, admittedly, for me. I get to talk to a FIFA World Cup player, <laughs> hopefully a FIFA World Cup champion. <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. Let's hope. <laughs> um, thank you for sharing uh, your story. Really, honestly, it's uh, to talk about the you know the pressures, the sort of the the hidden aspect of soccer and sports in general. I think I think it helps a lot of people better understand that it's not as glamorous and easy as it looks from the outside. I know a lot of people sometimes will say things like. Oh, whatever. They're making X amount of dollars. Why are they complaining? If they don't like it, they can come work my job where I make much less. But every job has pressures. Every job, there's instability. And that concept of, you know, you have to be ready 24-7. You're always monitoring what you're doing, what you're eating. 
is not an easy lifestyle. And I think sometimes we don't give athletes enough credit for that. Mm-hmm. Um, it's funny when you say that, uh, that, that, that it's so true. Uh, you hear it all the time when you hear the, you know, whoever say, Oh, uh, they can't be upset because they're making this much. And what if they're, but then you, it reminds me of the, it's, it's so crazy. I don't know why this came to my mind, but the, the song more money, hmm. more problems. It's so true. Yeah. It's so true. With more money comes more responsibility. Yeah. And actually much more to deal with. So um and, and like you said, that's what people I think don't see is is all the extra stuff that comes with it. Yes, you're making more money. Yes, some some players put up a front that like they're living this luxurious lifestyle, but trust me, there's always things that they're dealing with. In fact, they're probably dealing with more than other players that let's say are making a little bit less no that's that's super interesting to hear i think that resonates with i think people in a lot of different industries Mm -hmm. as well you know the the ones that tend to to show off the most are the ones that are hiding the most exactly um and and it could be very it could be very difficult and and very stressful for a lot of people and some people can't handle it like Mm -hmm. you strike me as this calm cool collected person you're just like you know what bring on the op- bring them on bring on the challenges i'm ready i'm good yeah, yeah, yeah. and it, but i think there's a lot of people that you know they may on the surface look like that but on the inside they're you know they're running a mile a minute yeah, yeah. um so i think there's i think there definitely needs to be more awareness around the mental aspect of professional sports i remember when i think i think when demar DeRozan was in toronto when he still played for the Raptors, he talked about, you know, prioritizing his mental health. Mm-hmm. It may have been when he moved, but the point was all of a sudden it was like this new concept to so many people. Like, what do you mean mental health mm-hmm. in sports? And I think people m- misjudge and misunderstand how impactful in a negative way, you know, being under the spotlight, the constant pressure, the constant criticism, the taking a peek at Twitter and seeing people you've never met will never meet have never played a game of soccer in their life saying this person sucks. They can't, they shouldn't be playing, get rid of them. Mm -hmm. And getting rid of them literally means moving a person and their family to a whole different place, up, uprooting their entire lifestyle. And I think we often take for granted because we see it from the outside Mm -hmm. and we don't really see it from the inside, which is why, like I said, I really appreciate you sharing a lot of this information because a lot of people just don't know these things. Mm -hmm. And if more people could understand that, perhaps maybe, maybe even just a little bit, some of them would be a little nicer on on social media. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, for sure, I think being aware is 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 important, right? And then, what you do with that information is up to the person. You know, everybody can have an opinion. I think, um, and that's fine. But as long as you have the information that goes comes behind it, and and I think more people would would definitely change the way they are on Twitter or whatever social media um, for sure, and I have actually a, a a new level of respect for for athletes. I think for sure. All right, cool. Well, listen. Good luck. Thank you. You know, like I said, you have the entire country rooting for you. Um, you're gonna do great. We know you will, <laughs> of course. and uh, we're going to be watching closely and rooting for you guys and cheering you every step of the way. And um, let's have this chat again after you're done and let's talk about yeah. how the World Cup was. For I think sure. it'll be great. For sure, man. I appreciate you having me on. This was it was a great chat. A no, really absolutely. Great chat, so I really appreciate it. No, fantastic. Thank you very much. We appreciate right, it. Thank you.